Hi, Andrea again with Beats by Britain, and I'm starting a new project. I'm very, very excited about this. I am going to be creating world drum kits. Um, I'm going to be creating drum kits specific to various regions in the world, and they're going to contain samples, drum samples, that are not typically found as stock samples in Logic or in many other drum programs like Easy Drummer 3, Stephen Slate drums and stuff like that. Even if you look in the uh, Latin percussion sections, you're probably not going to find these, uh, these drums. So what I've decided to do, since I like to play world percussion, what I've decided to do is sample my own. And I'm going to be creating drum kits in Logic uh, using Drum Kit Designer, primarily. Drum Kit Designer, I mean not Drum Kit Designer, I'm sorry. Drum Machine Designer, primarily. A little bit of Drum Kit Designer and Easy Drummer 3. Um, so what we're going to do is, this video is I'm just going to show you how I record and chop samples. What I'm looking for are drums that, world drums that I don't already have in Logic. And a good example of that is these Pakawash drums from India. And I'm probably mispronouncing that. I apologize profusely if I am. But this is a good example. These are great sounding drums. They are not in Logic. They are not in Easy Drummer 3. I'm not aware of any MIDI plugin, MIDI packs that I could buy that would include these. And I really don't want to because I really like to sample my own. Um, first things first, uh, when I'm sampling something, I like to make sure that I've paid for it or that I'm not stealing from somebody. So some of these samples are from LPs that I've that obviously I've paid for um, or uh, a friend has recorded um, acoustically um, something like that I have tried I don't want to steal from anybody so first things first make sure that the samples that you get you've paid for or that you uh, that have been obtained properly you know stealing is not right so anyway, um, you're going to open a, uh, let's pretend like I got these from an LP, which I think I actually did. Uh, some of these I know I got from an LP, and I'm pretty sure that that's where I got the pocket wash from. We've got a great music store here, uh, a great record store that has a huge section of uh, LPs covering um world percussion, um, Caribbean music, African, and all that kind of stuff. And pretty sure that's where I got this from, this, uh, this uh, LP. Anyway, so you're going to open a Logic session, an, a new Logic project. Pretend like I'm doing a new one here. Okay. So, no, I don't want to close that. Um, we're going to choose an audio track. For your input, you're going to choose the source for your audio. Um, if I'm sampling from an LP, my source is going to be whatever my record player is plugged into, which in this case is input 10. Under number of tracks to create, um, I like to just go ahead and start off with 20 or 30 because, yeah, I'm going to be sampling a lot. So I could add like 20 tracks and then I don't need input monitoring or record enable I don't need any of that right now okay so I'm just going to click on I would click on create but what I'm going to do is show you one I've already done if I click on create it's going to create 20 tracks with the audio input as uh, input 10 but I've already done that All right. All right. Let's 
let's open the project I was just working on. Okay, so this is, these are all audio samples. There's 24 tracks, I think, something like that. And I've already chopped all of these, but I'm going to start from the beginning. So I've created my audio tracks. I haven't done any recording yet. Okay. So I'm going to click on the track I want. Um, go ahead and arm the track for recording. And then play your LP or your cassette or wherever your samples are that you have. Okay. I've already got these recorded. So this is Pakawash. These are Pakawash drum samples from an LP um, that I got a long time ago. Right? That's the mid. And these are already chopped. We're about to hear the low. See, isn't that good? And then the finger slap. And a palm slap. And that's an Indian drum called a paka wash. All right, what you're going to get when you first record this is you're going to get one big long audio uh, track. And that's just perfectly fine. Okay, so because you haven't chopped it yet like I have. So you've got your big long audio track here. Let's turn the repeat off. Okay, you're going to edit that a little bit. So you can hit E to edit that. Now, my samples are already chopped, but right after you record it, your samples are not going to be chopped. The only thing I want you to remember is when you're sampling for drums, for a drum kit, you want to make sure and leave the audio tail as long as possible. So you don't want to delete anything. You just want to chop, but not delete. So I start with the beginning of the first waveform. And this is already chopped the way I want it. Okay. You're going to enlarge the waveforms as large as you can possibly get them. If you need to go out that way, you can. Yeah, yeah. And what I want, I already see something I need to fix here. So what I want is I want to start chopping at the beginning of the waveform. And you got to make a surgical cut. This is why it's important to enlarge this waveform till it looks ridiculous like this. Because this is what I want. I want the playhead at exactly the right spot. And it's Command-T to cut it. And this you can delete because there's nothing there. All right, so my sample starts at the beginning of the waveform. My sample is going to end at the beginning of the next waveform. So if you're audio file looked like this. Let's pretend it looks like this. Okay, something like that. You make your first chop at the start of the first waveform, then you're going to chop again at the start of the next waveform. This is already chopped. I don't need to change it. Okay, don't want to delete anything. Don't delete any of this empty space. Just leave it alone. I because when you're playing an electronic drum kit or a drum controller when I hit that trigger I don't need a choppy sound I need a nice long drum sound a drum sample that just rings out because that way if I want to um, control the I mean I I control the, the my my drum playing with my 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 volume and with my drum technique I don't want the sample to be all choppy sounding I want the sample to really ring out because there's nothing worse than a drum sample that's been chopped too short and doesn't ring out 
So for example, um, this is how, if I was to cut this, this sample, let's say for example, I was to cut it, uh, I don't want to do that. If I was to cut it like here, for example, that's too short. So it's going to sound when I actually get to the point where I've built a drum kit and I try to play this on a drum kit or on my keyboard or something, this is going to sound terrible. It's going to sound like it's been, it's going to sound like it's been chopped off too short. So I don't want it to sound chopped off too short. This is what I want. When I play the bass pocket wash, I want it to ring out like that. That's perfect. Okay. And same thing with an I just accidentally chopped it. Don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't want to chop it. Undo that. Yeah. Okay. So, here's the high pocket wash. And you want it to ring out. Go ahead and leave all that tail in there. It may not look like there's any information here, but there is. I can still hear it ringing. And that's what I want. All right, let's play the finger slap. Perfect. And this is the drum slap. This is the palm slap anyway. Okay. So those samples are chopped perfectly. And you kind of want to do that with any other audio track that you intend on using for drum samples. That's when you make your chops, you want to look, you want to enlarge the waveform as large as you can possibly get it like that. Okay. And here again, I can, I see where I've made a mistake and I want to cut off some of this. So, with the Dwara, probably. Yeah, I gotta solo that. Sorry about that. All right, so we can cut off a little of this right here. Enlarge that waveform, cut off a little bit of that. You don't have to. There's not much there, but I can cut off a little bit of that. So we're going to Command T to chop that. Get rid of this. Okay. And now play the sample. And it should sound great. Yep. And it sounds good. And that's the high. And this is the mid. And the palm slap. And that all sounds pretty good. And one other, uh, one other change you can make here is if your samples weren't recorded at a high enough 
volume. Let's, uh, you can turn the gain up a little bit So on the track. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my, my right click tool. My right click tool is a gain tool. And I'm going to bring the gain up a smidge here. All right. And let's play this again. Let's play the whole thing. And that sounds fine. Okay, so I've chopped my samples. Notice the track name. This the uh, the regions. I their samples regions. I call them the same thing anyway. So we've chopped our audio file up into individual regions, and because I named the track properly, this is a Dwara. I probably have mispronounced that. Um, but because I named the track properly, now the regions are named properly. They'll be named something like Dora 1, 2, 3, and 4. And all I have to do is name each sample. Like this is, I've named it Dora Low. Uh, I'm using uh, my command click option. And I can command click and rename it if I want to, but I don't need to. Okay. So your track is recorded. It's been chopped properly. And I can reiterate this because I've learned this lesson the hard way. When you are creating drum samples, don't delete anything. Just make your chops where you want them. Don't delete any of the audio tail. Leave it all there because you want a nice, long audio tail. It sounds great. When I play these samples in, in the next one or two videos, um, when I play these samples on my electronic drum kit, they will sound great. They won't sound like they're choppy, cut off, anything like that. They'll sound perfectly norm, normal and natural. So don't delete any of the audio tail just make your chops and don't delete anything uh you know other than like at the very beginning um before this first waveform yeah there's going to be some there's going to be a, a line there with nothing yeah you can delete that but start your chop at the very beginning of the first waveform that's your first chop and your next chop is at the very beginning of the second waveform Make your chop there, don't delete anything, and then just move on until you've chopped all your samples the way, the, the samples that you want. Let's listen to the frame drum samples. And again, frame drum is not in Logic. It's not uh, in Easy Drummer 3, that I know of anyway. But frame drum, this frame drum sounds awesome. And it's going to be included in one of my kits that I'm creating. So here we go. Ah, keep forgetting to solo it. That's the palm slap. That's the low. That's the high. And here's the finger slap. Sounds great. That's exactly what I want. Nice long audio tail there. Play it again. It's as long an audio tail as I could get out of it. And it sounds great. That's exactly what I want. All right. And Gautam. I believe I may be wrong about this, but I, I have to do my research. But I think that a Gautam is... A North African instrument but I may be wrong about that but it's another example of a world percussion instrument that is not in logic not an easy drummer 3 and not in any other drum libraries that I could find so I decided to sample it myself I got this uh, from a, uh, uh, a, a local music store uh, there's a folk music score music store real close to me 
that sells a lot of world percussion. And I like to just go there and listen to the customers play the percussion. Um, I'm good on some of these instruments, but not on all of them. Uh, in this case, I was I was there looking at something else, and it was just me and one other guy, and he was playing a guitar. I didn't even know what it was. He was playing a guitar, so I decided to just pull up my cell phone and record him. This music store is an old, small store. It's got a lot of carpeting in it. Um, so, uh, you know, people that are inter interested in purchasing um, folk percussion like this can go uh, sit on a stool on carpet and hear and play it, and it sounds awesome. It's, I, need, I did not even need to apply any kind of audio effects or anything like that. All I did was pull out the cell phone, record this guy, asked him to play just a couple of notes on there so I could so I could sample it. And then I was so pleased that I ended up just buying the guitar, you know. I don't want to go sample somebody in a music store and then not buy one of their products. That's kind of cheap. Uh, but I liked it so much and they had a couple of them, so I got one. Um I don't know how to play it very well, but this is a sample recording of somebody else. Okay, so we're going to play this. All right. Actually, let's just play this one here, right here. Okay. This is the high. And the low. And I got a nice long audio tail out of it. That's perfect. And the finger. I called it a finger slap. So the only change that I would make is I would bring the gain up on these because they're a little bit soft. So I have, uh, I've already made my chops the way I want. And I start when I'm doing uh, drum sampling, when I'm chopping samples for drums, I don't delete anything. This is empty space in here. There was no reason to keep that. But um, I start by, chop, by making my first chop at the beginning of the first waveform, the very beginning, right here. You want to enlarge that waveform as much as you possibly can. Yeah, okay, so that um, I'm sure that I'm seeing all of the waveform. Okay, and you're going to you make your first chop, like I said, at the beginning of the waveform, and your next chop is at the beginning of the next waveform. doing that. Got a solo that. So your next chop is here. Now I've already done that, but if I hadn't if I hadn't have done that, if I hadn't made my chop already, this is where I would make it. I would make my chop right at the beginning of the next waveform. Alright. And we'll hear the guitar low. And let it ring. And you want that. You want to leave a nice long audio tail. Okay, and we'll close the editor. All right, so you want to leave a nice long audio tail uh, so that it doesn't sound choppy when I actually create the kit and start playing this on my electronic drums. One more thing I'm going to do is bring the gain up just a smidge. These samples are probably, let's see if I, yeah, they're a little bit on the low side, so I'm going to bring the gain up just a smidge here. Yeah. Good. Okay. And I have my, um, my right click button on my mouse assigned to the gain tool. That's how I do that. Okay, so 
Now let's play these. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Don't need to add too much gain, but a little bit. And that's perfect. Okay, so that's how I record an audio track that I'm that I'm gonna chop. Record the audio track, make my chops, don't delete anything except except uh, empty space. Yeah, you can delete that. But um, leave your audio tails intact. Don't chop them too short. Okay, make sure your track is named correctly so that your, your regions, which will become your samples, that your regions are also named correctly. Okay, and then we're going to close the audio editor. And you'll notice that I have sampled a lot of other uh, drum sample. I've sampled a lot of other drums. I don't remember where I got these Kenjira drum samples from. I might have got those from an LP. But let's hear that. Okay. So, Kenjira. I think those are also uh, Northern African. Again, I got to do my research. Because that's going to come in handy when I create the drum kits. I want to make sure I name my drum kits according to the region of the world that they come from. Right? So that's the low. That's, I think, a palm slap. Sounds great to me. And, again, not standard in logic. Not part of tune tracks that I know of. The tune tracks drum library. I don't know. I don't think it's in there. I know it's not in the Logic Drum Library. And um, so we can go on and have fun. I'm not, you, you don't have to listen to all of these yet. You will in a minute. You will in the next video when I start creating the drum kits from these. Um, the chimes, these chime samples are pretty cool. Let's play that. These are clock chimes. And there's one more. I figured those would make very cool symbols. And they will become symbols in a future drum kit. Yeah, we don't need that. Um, Pandero the same way. Pandero is a Brazilian uh, drum have not been able to find any Pandero samples in Logic, the stock in Logic, not in Tracks drum library, nothing. So I track, I sampled my own. That's with a, played with the fist, palm slap. Actually, that's a palm slap. Okay. So on and on and on, and in the next video, um, I may have some more drum samples um, uh, that, I've, that I've tracked, but in the next video, we'll start actually building a drum kit with these, okay? Um, we'll start building our first drum kit. My intention at the end of this project is that I'm going to have a drum kit for each region of the world. Um, so I'll have a drum kit full of Indian drums. Um, and I will have done my research so I know what part of India they come from um, and so forth and so on. I'm going to have a drum kit with African drums. And a lot of these drums are not, a lot of the African drums that I'm going to include are not stock in Logic or the Tune Tracks drum library. So it's going to be very, very interesting sampling these things. Um, I'm going to have a drum kit for... Uh, Japanese and Chinese drums and I'm going to have a drum kit for um, Arabic drums and a lot of them kind of cross over into the African drums. Um, uh, they seem to be used in different regions in, including um, areas south of Africa, uh, south of North Africa. So anyway, um, yeah. I got to study up on my geography too. <laughs>
And I'm also going to sample some Latin drums that are, now Logic does have a lot of uh, Latin drums, Latin drum samples. So does Tune Tracks. But it's not all inclusive. And I have found that there are some Latin drums that are missing from Logic and from Tune Tracks. So um, tambourine is one. And that's not tambourine, like the shaker tambourine. It's tambourine with an M. And uh, Pandero is also missing. And there's probably a lot more. Another drum that I sampled was a Dubé drum, which is just a box drum. Uh, it's not really specific to any part of the world. Um, it was invented by a guy named Dion Dublin. Sounds great. I sampled it and you get to hear it in a future video. Pancake, pancake drums are um, just pretty much any drum that's uh, uh, short. <laughs> um, so you could have a snare that's a pancake snare or a pancake tom or anything like that. But I did sample some pancake drums and they sound pretty good too. So anyway, enjoy the ride. This is the end of the first video. Next video will be coming out in a couple of days. See ya.